Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. Welcome to the Animation Station Podcast, your home for discussions and debates about all things animation. Each week, we'll rank, review, and revel in animated shows from yesterday and today, and from around the world. So grab your acne slingshot, set your mobile suit to autopilot, and put on your mouse ears. The Animation Station Podcast begins now. Yo, yeah, they did the chicken with bacon wrapped around it. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. and those green beans with almonds. The, oh. And the risotto. The risotto. So it good. wasn't really a risotto. It was kind of like listen, mushy rice. Listen, but, to, to most people, that was risotto. Yeah. And if, you have, if you've had real risotto, it's like, this yeah. is not risotto. It, I don't know I mean, what they, Taco Bell doesn't actually have any tacos, really. They, they have what, it depends on what your definition of a taco <laughs> Exactly. Is. Depends um, on your definition of risotto. But that, uh, that sauce... Too, like mm-hmm. that they that you put on it. Mm-hmm. I like smother that oh, chicken yeah. and that it sauce. Was I was like, Deloitte. It was like a brandy smoked gouda yeah, cream it's, sauce. It's fantastic. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I, these are the yeah. kinds of lunches we get at work. Yeah, so come work <laughs> with us. Woo-hoo. All right, ready to kick this thing off? Man, I'm so ready. I'm excited about this episode. We have a little special treat for everybody in this episode. Something we've never done before. Welcome to episode 17 of the Animation Station Podcast. 17. We're getting up there, man. I'm one of your hosts, Josh. I'm the other one of your hosts, Gavin. Are we hosts? Like, can, Do we do that, or is it like I'm your um, co-host? Or is like, if there is there a one host and then a co-host? I mean, how about it's one host and Josh? Is that Does that sound right to how you? How about one host and your producer? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. I, I can go with that. I like that. Producer, engineer. We should call ourselves something else. Hmm. Not like your conductors. Because uh, we'll get on it, that. like you're pulling into the animation station. <laughs> 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 oh, <David. laughs> yes. <laughs> That's wow, that hilarious. was awful. <laughs> no, that was great. I like it. But yeah, we should come up with titles for ourselves. I could be the post creator marketer, and you could be the producer engineer. And we could double as co-hosts. Yeah, we had some engineering issues before we started this thing. Yeah, there were some Good reboots Lord. and some uninstalls and some reinstalls and some error dealing with. But uh, Josh whipped that computer back into shape. Yeah. And here we are. Okay, You Gavin. got some news? Dang it, I was about to transition. Okay, transition, Kill, man. Kill him a thunder. It's a good thing we don't have any sponsors yet. I hop right in the middle of transitions. I would have to try and you know, sponsor into an ad read, and then you're just popping all over the place. Yeah, you can edit. I can't. I'm not editing <laughs> any of this, though. Uh, yeah, I do have some news. Okay. We did finally this week get a dub cast for Your Name. Ooh. The Kimi, Kimi no Nawa. The one that we are so excited to see. Yes. Ah, I can't wait till this movie comes out. And we've got, uh, oh Lord have mercy, Michael. See, this is this is this is an American. So, Michael Center uh, Center Nicholas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He plays uh, our main male character, uh, Taki okay. Takishibana, uh, and he was Kenji from Summer Wars, the main character oh, in Summer Wars. Oh, okay, excellent. Um, and we have uh, Stephanie Shea as oh, Lord. the female um, character. Mi- I got this. You can do it. <laughs> I got it. Um, Mitsuha Miyami. Oh wow, Miyamizu. Huh. Uh, and uh, Stephanie Shea plays. Uh, she's Sailor Moon. Oh okay. Well, she's yeah. I know this, yeah. yeah. Um, she's Orihime in Bleach, Hinata in Naruto, and this one because I know you like these fun long anime names. Uh huh. In Fate Stay Night and Unlimited Blade Works and everything's, she's Il. <laughs> Iliasville von Einsburn. Nice. Yes. Impressive. Which I'm not sure what Burn is. I should look up what Burn is in German because Eins is one. So Eins Burn. Don't know what Burn is. I mean, it might just be Burn, right? Well, no, I, it's Beast. <laughs> I'm done. Okay. What about you, Gavin? Do you got anything? It's Mickey Mouse's birthday as we're recording today, so that's kind of cool. 
And then isn't there um, – Oh, you already – you posted about the – what was it? Justice League Dark? Yeah, Justice League Dark. What is League that? Dark. I'm interested in what that is. It is a – well, this is – Because I didn't think DC could get any darker. Jeez. I, I mean, really? Um, well, this is another animated rated R movie, so they're kind of going off of what they did with the killing joke. Oh, is it going to be straight to DVD or are they going to put it in theaters this, for a night? This one, I believe they're uh, – so far, what I've heard is they've got the DVD and instant – video thing already pretty much set that that's mm-hmm. happening okay there i think they're still working out if they're actually going to put this one in theaters did the killing joke make money on that well, it was one night right it was a one night event yeah yeah did it make money like did I, they actually I come out ahead know. on that apparently they made money on everything on that like the sales and everything mm-hmm. so it must have done pretty well yeah i know a lot of people were excited about it it was i, I mean, mean i was excited for it and then i saw it <laughs> Well, yeah, you never know going into it, yeah. but um, well, have you seen anything of this? Any production stills or any trailers? Or I just saw the trailer that they put up there. Does, but, it, and, does and the quality look better? It looks better, but again, so did the stuff for The Killing Joke because you're watching it on a TV screen. Ah. You, you have problems when you take something that is formatted to be a Blu-ray or DVD yeah, and, and, blow, that's, it that and blow it up to put it on yeah. a you know, what 40-foot screen. Mm-hmm. Then it just... It, doesn't work right i mean yeah w- watching it right like that i mean if they do a um like a movie release maybe do get with oliver again and we do another like thing that we did with the killing joke yeah but i mean if they don't i'm totally fine with just buying it on blu-ray mm-hmm. but with this one we're getting more of a it's it's darker so that this is the justice league like you know the justice league like Batman, I, Superman, yep, the Flash, on board, on board, all yes. those guys. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's in there. This. I think is, I'm out. I think that's the only DC characters I know. That's all right. Um, Green Lantern. Oh, yep, I know Green yeah. Lantern. Uh, I had how, I had the underoos when I was a kid. Green Lantern. Oh, jeez. Yep, you did. you would be someone who had like the Green Lantern. I didn't pick them out. I was a kid. I didn't know who it was. You're like, oh, I like Green. I got him for like a birthday or something. Oh, man. <laughs> and Darkest Day and Blackest Night. Um, but yeah, with, uh, with Justice League Dark, you have, like, with this one, you have Batman, Mm -hmm. and he goes, like, there's demons that are basically attacking. So, it's really not something the Justice League can handle. Right. Like, our main Justice League. Is there a superhero priest? Yes. John Constantine. Oh! I forgot about him. Is he DC? Yes, he's DC. Is he in the Justice League? He's in Justice League Dark. Woo! Yeah, it's it's like this secondary Justice League that he basically creates. Batman goes to him and is like, we have no idea how to handle this. Yeah. So he, you know, kind of turns everything over to Constantine. You may have just sold me on watching this. Yeah, and Constantine's always been cool, except when he was Keanu Reeves. Then Uh, he wasn't as cool. I liked that movie. I I don't care what you're about to say. I liked that movie. Hey, I mean... It was, it was good. It was alright. Did you watch the show? I didn't know there was a show. Yeah, there was a so. show on NBC. It was actually really good. I was not aware of it, so yeah. no, I didn't watch yeah, it. Whatever. But yeah, in, in this one we have uh, like some of our main people. We have uh, Constantine. Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman's going to be in it. Mm-hmm. Superman, Batman. Zatanna. You don't uh, know Zatanna? Yeah, that doesn't She's make any cool. sense to me. Um, Etrigan. Yeah, no. He's you're making guy. up words now. And Swamp Thing. You know Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing from like the 1940s science fiction or 1950s science fiction movies? Well, I mean, though... I, like I, Creature from the Black Lagoon? No. Kind of the same thing? Kind of. Okay. Except this guy, he's like a big mossy man. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah, Swamp Thing. Nice. So yeah, so they're making that, and that comes out. No definitive date. Early 2017 is what uh, we got from Warner Brothers, so... Well, we do have some definitive release dates on the near horizon, right? Kubo comes out Kubo comes out... Week. Well, when they're listening to this, it comes out tomorrow, so it comes out oh. Tuesday the 22nd. Go buy Kubo and watch it. And go listen to our review on Cartoon Cafe yeah, of Kubo we did and a the review. Two Strings. Well, kind of a review. We did our initial Yeah, we did a very non-spoiler review. Free. But maybe we should review it at some time I mean, in the near it's future. It's out now. I mean, are you going to buy it? I'm going to buy it. I'm definitely buying it. So. It's amazing. And also, Moana comes out next week in theaters. Wednesday. <laughs> Yes! Oh, I'm so excited. We're going to go see it, and I'm pumped. I can't wait to see it, and we're going, we're spoiling ourselves. We're going to the fancy theater with the fancy balcony where they serve the fancy adult beverages, and it's going to be amazing. 
So I'm pumped for it, and then it rolls us right into the holiday weekend, so this next week is going to be awesome. It's a very, very busy November. Yeah, and then we I have was a lot looking, planned. December's also extremely busy. Is it? Like what? Like for us or just in general? Just in general. I mean, because we've got, we've got Christmas coming up. Uh-huh. Um, birthdays are in December. Some very important mm, birthdays are in December. Yeah, so I think a certain producer engineer yeah, might very, have a birthday. Yeah, very important birthdays that are literally seven days before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you miss out on presents because of that when you were a kid? Did no, I, I, usu- I usually I usually got see birthdays. I'm kind of like eh about because oh. like I usually got like clothes and stuff for birthdays. Uh-huh. So Christmas was when I got the toys. That's why I love Christmas. Nice, Gavin. Did you finally finish season one of Gravity Falls? I did. About time. It's so good. And we started season two. And I think we're about seven episodes into season two. So yeah, we just watched Blendon's game. Yeah, we'll probably finish it in the next couple weeks. It, uh, my wife is on a another show kind of binge right now, so we're we're not at the same pace that we were a week or so ago. But we will get back to it, and we'll definitely we watched an episode tonight, so um, you know we will get back to it. But man, season one is so cool because it starts out kind of on a little bit of an even keel Spo- and hold on real quick ramps real, real up quick. to the end so we're let's go ahead and just do like a little synopsis of season one okay before we get into our guest okay so spoilers for season one of gravity falls that started in 2012 time, yeah. and i think the season ended in 2013 14 yeah, maybe this is the weirdest show ever because it has two seasons that they spread out over four years um yeah it ended early this year yeah like in february this so year so crazy but um what a show that gravity falls is one of the most unique television experiences i've ever had and the things that they do on this show are entertaining hilarious mm-hmm. mysterious um sometimes creepy yeah I mean, it it hits so many different angles, and I, I love I love all of it. Now, I feel like there is a pretty substantial kind of overarching story, even though it's not necessarily the main focus of every episode. But it's kind of about you know Dipper in particular, kind of discovering the mysteries of Gravity Falls and the Mystery Shack and kind of just the area around it and all the weird things that happen there, all the stranger things that happen there. Nice. Uh, and it, you know, and so that kind of carries the show, but really for me, what makes the show awesome is the characters because you got the, the Pines twins of Dipper and Mabel who are delightfully brother and sister and best friend and just, you know, Co shenanigans pullers. They're virtually perfect. They're they're amazing, and and the dichotomy of their relationship is is beautiful. And they, you know they kind of have all different parts, but together they're like one super twin hilarious machine. And then their uncle, Grunkle Stan, Stan became one of my favorite characters ever. Like at first I was like, okay, he's gonna he's meant to be kind of the rough, annoying like one that kind of gets in their way. But by the end of season one, he's like your superhero of the show. It's amazing how how you know you come to love him through the show. And then Seuss, who's just <laughs> delightful. Oh, Seuss. He might be my favorite character in that show. I just I love whenever he enters the scene because I don't know he's just so pure. And then you got um, oh, what's the girl? Wendy. Wendy. Wendy Quadroy. Yeah. Wendy, who at first I thought, okay, she's not really going to ever be a main character, but she kind of becomes more and more of a main character yeah. as that season goes on. So, um, I mean, really, the first season is just about you know Dipper slowly realizing that you know the things that he's seeing are real, that the journal that he has is talking about real stuff and if he can figure it out might be, you know, important. And, you know, and by the end of season one, it's him realizing, yeah, this is, this is huge. And, uh, Grunkle Stan 
basically kind of revealing like, okay, yeah, I know about it, and we all know about it now, yeah. so be careful. Don't use this offensively. Just use it defensively well, because there's some crazy stuff out there. Well, it's really cool what they did with, this, uh, with the show because episode one, we have Grunkle Stan going behind the vending machine. Is that episode one? That's episode I didn't think one. It was that early. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's episode one. And then that never happens again. Until like halfway through. Until that the last three episodes. Oh, is that fun? No, actually, no, it's the two part season finale. So it's the, wow. the the second to last episode. Because we go into Grunkle Stan's mind yeah. when Gideon's trying to steal it. Oh, we, and what a Bill. fantastic episode. So That's yeah, like yeah, favorites. we we go into it and Sue sees the you know the random memory. It was like if only anyone ever found out what was behind <laughs> this story. It's like boring. Um, so and then at the very end, so we go this whole entire s- season pretty much without anything. The same thing goes with the grappling hook. Yeah, we get introduced to the grappling yeah. hook in season one. We don't see it again <laughs> mm-hmm. until the last episode yep. of the season. And then it gets used. Then it gets used. That's awesome. To wonderful effect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really has the perfect rhythm to it. That first season. So far, the second season is just it's just continuing on that greatness. But that first season, to me, just has a wonderful cadence to it and a slow build toward what is a really big and satisfying climactic finish and i just i I think it's a great freaking show man yeah season one is a is a setting up season yeah i kind of i kind of gather that yeah Yeah. and so um i'm really pumped for watching season two fully unfold now i do want to talk about the artwork in that show okay i think it is one of the most perfectly designed shows i've ever seen it is stunning to see very cartoony yet very sophisticated character design exist in beautiful environments like that just so much texturing and subtlety of color and shading and lighting and i it's so wonderfully composed i i I think of it as a, a beautiful composition because the color palette is perfectly tuned the character design is just beautiful. Everything looks like it belongs in that world. I've talked about this on many of our episodes. I really want a cohesive aesthetic statement with all of my animation. And that is most easily ascertained by looking at the characters. And I feel like all of the characters have the same design qualities to them. So they feel like they exist in the same world together and it makes visual sense. And I think they nail it in the show. And I'm fascinated with how it's animated as well i'm always catching myself looking at dipper's hat because it's always interesting to me how animators have to show an object that they've drawn at so many different angles and and just watching the bill of his hat turn at different angles and how they choose to show the curve of it in different ways it's almost like mickey mouse's ears i don't know if you've ever noticed this before but it was decided very early on that Mickey Mouse's ears, no matter what direction his face is facing, they're always they're gonna be. always in full silhouette. So you can see the full shape of his ears, no matter what way he's facing. You always see his ears. You never see like like a flat ear because you're looking at it at the side. You're always seeing the ear from the full front, no matter if he's facing to the side. And that was a, a very specific choice that they made, and it and it helps him retain that iconic Mickey Mouse look that you see. So it's kind of a similar thing watching Dipper's hat. It's not exactly the same because his hat clearly doesn't just stay pointed at the camera the whole time. But it's, it's, it's interesting to watch how they decide to you know, show you the curve of the bill depending on the direction of it. And it, it's hard to explain in words, but if you go back and look at any scene that Dipper's in, and just watch his yeah, hat. Yeah, it, it does kind of move like from it here fascinates to here me. Yeah. to here. Yeah. yeah, and they kind of, you know, tilt it, and it's like uh, on Family Guy, um, Quagmire's face is such a weird proportion, and so if he's turned in a weird direction, I mean, his whole like jawline seems to jut in one direction that you wouldn't expect it to, and then if he turns the other way, it kind of shifts his whole face the other way, and it, it's just fascinating to me to see how animators make those choices, but 
every time they do, it's to serve the proportions of what you're expecting to see from that character. And we all know the ratio of, of hat to hair to Dipper's cute round face. He you has know, a when really we big him. head. He has like one of the biggest yeah, heads in those, the whole entire show. Those Dipper show. craniums are, are big. Mabel too. I mean, but they're so adorable. Well, you have to hide that embarrassing birthmark. Yeah. Of Ursa Major. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, okay. I, I have a couple of questions for you because you're like a Gravity Falls guy. See. Si. And I'm glad you encouraged me to watch this show. And I'm also glad that the Podcateers did because they were pitching it hardcore on their show as well. Shout out, Podcateers. Um, there's some questions that I, I want to know if they're answered. I don't want you to answer them for me, but I want to know if they're answered. Okay. Do we ever find out what the symbology is of Grunkle Stan's fez, the, the goldfish eating a pellet or whatever? Um, is that ever explained? For whatever reason, I, I, I just really want to know what that is. We find out that the symbol means something. Okay, cool. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Um, oh, I thought of one earlier, and I can't remember what it is. While you try and think of that, what did you think of like the jokes in the show? Oh, the jokes were great. Yeah. I, I, I think the humor in that show is amazing. There's there's a scene in um oh what is it? Uh the bottomless pit. When <laughs> that is such when a they good when they do the like oh Seuss's bit where it's like, wait, does this have to be a does this have to be a, a pun or something? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like that was the title. Does this have to be a pun or something? Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, there's a part in there where uh, it's it's the one where they do the teeth, where uh -huh. Stan can't lie. Yeah. Um, he's when he's asleep and Mabel goes and switches the teeth. Mm -hmm. He's wearing. Uh, I mean, he's he's reading a uh, book called Plot Twist. So it's like <laughs> this is the plot twist right here, guys. I didn't catch that. Yeah, That's, it's really good. So many subtle things like that in the show. And like it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, you haven't gotten to it yet, but in season two, Dipper's watching the used to be about history channel, which is really good. <laughs> so uh, he's, yeah, he's watching Ghost Harassers on the used to be about <laughs> history channel. Like, yeah, it's pretty good. Yes. And then, like, uh, amazing. in the inconveniencing, um, Stan watches that, like, basically the version of uh, oh, what's that thing that Danny Trey watched? Um, yeah, Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey, yeah, pretty or much. Some you know, British drama. Yeah, and like yeah. he's watching it on the uh, black and white period piece Old Lady Boring Movie Channel. <laughs> yeah, The Duchess so Approves, good. starring, so I don't even remember. I love it, man. Yeah. The, a rapperable corner, like, There's visual jokes, there's um, contextual jokes, there's, you know, just slapstick jokes. I love when, out of nowhere, Dipper and Mabel will just whip out a new secret handshake that's themed on whatever the scene is or something. Yeah. Like we just watched that one where they're throwing the surprise party. So they, they bop, do that bop, little bop. party handshake and it ends in the little. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and, then, like, and then like, and then like, yeah, season two, too, we got the bleep, blop, bloopity, bloop twins. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just dynamite. I, I'm really loving it. And I'm going to be so sad when I get to the end and, you know, just knowing that it's only two seasons on the other hand, it may be kind of perfect because sometimes when they keep trying to push something, then it loses its, you know, oomph and yeah. kind of gets watered down after a while. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's perfect. You know, it's not like Firefly that got cut off after 13 episodes or Freaks and Geeks, you know, something that was like so amazing and then just stopped. Uh, it, it, it seems like it's a fully contained piece in and of itself because I think didn't, he only intended to be a, well. It was a it was run. it was supposed to be like three seasons in a movie. Was okay. originally like he had a set. It was like it's going to be three seasons in a movie, oh. but it's it's also a storyboard mm -hmm. driven show. So storyboards take forever to do. Okay. And so when he like basically when you do this, it takes a lot more time to animate everything because you're going off of like basically a board mm -hmm. so instead of it you know being just like something you know plot driven or we're just going to make this a whatever show like gumball or something like that mm -hmm. where you can just like write a little script you know throw stuff out like here's your joke insert joke boom it's out yeah with this it took them like basically almost two years to write one season like Jeez. that's the same thing with star versus the forces <laughs> of evil uh darren nefsi uses a she, she does storyboard too. So it just – like two years for one season, it just yeah, makes it nuts. makes it really, really hard. And that's one I of agree. the problems 
and with Disney XD's random, we don't know when we're going to get the next episode. Yeah, well, That's why I'm... the show took almost five years to come yeah. out for two seasons. Well, I'm I'm glad they took their time to make it as high quality as they did, though, because I think it works out. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's plan. You know, I'm gonna finish the full thing, and we'll do a full Gravity Falls episode. That and, would and be we'll just, fantastic. We'll really we'll really get into the nitty gritty on it. Okay, Gavin. Before we stop with the Gravity Falls, did you have a favorite episode in season one? Um, it's either gonna be the Bottomless Pit or um, what was the zombie episode? Apocalypse something apocalypse scare apple that's season karaoke that's season two episode one dang okay um bombless pit for you probably or or the one where you're in uh grunkle stan's mind okay those are the two best ones i think see i liked uh the inconveniencing which one was that that's the one where they get stuck in uh dipper says that he's 13 he and mabel are 13 and they go to the convenience store Oh, that's right. And he does the Lammy Lammy dance. Yes, to save the day. Mm -hmm. And Double Dipper. Yeah. Where we... That's a good episode, too. The thing with Double Dipper, we still have clones three and four that are still out in the woods. They probably got wet and disintegrated. Did they? Probably. Will we ever see them again in season two, maybe? Maybe you're building up for something. I don't know. Maybe? (laughs) Nice. Okay, I think we're good with Gravity Falls. I think so, too. Now, you said that you had a correction to make from two weeks ago. Yes, Padma inverted. I And I admitted it at the time that I needed to think about it, and I rated it a 4.5. And I wanted to think about it because the way I was speaking of it, you assumed I was going to give it a 5. Yeah, you sound like you were going to give it a 5. I'm real picky and choosy and selective with my 5 giving. Well, I'm here to tell you today, Josh Kane, oh, that no. Padma inverted, oh. the score has shifted, uh. and it shifted right up to a five. Ah! Yes! That movie is one of the best things I have ever seen, and I must own it, and I will own it. Sorry, I ran around. I will cherish it for the rest of my life. Thank you for showing it to me, Josh Kane. Wonderful. I'm so glad you <laughs> liked it. Yeah. So this goes up there right up with Pinocchio. Well, I mean, if are, we're are splitting you, hairs. Well, no, I'm yeah. saying on the fives. Yeah, this goes I'm, right up there with yeah. Pinocchio for yeah. you. Well, you know, ladies it had, and gentlemen, it I had made the benefit of like 80 years of wisdom, five. animation wisdom. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but before we transition into our main feature today, let's um, let's talk a little bit about our thanks giveaway. Okay. And remind listeners so. Guys, we're doing a big, awesome Beauty and the Beast-themed giveaway. If you haven't seen the posts, um, go to the Animation Station uh, feed on Instagram or Twitter and find the post. Uh, It's a scenario where if you are following us and you repost it and you hashtag ASPthanks, you have a chance to win a prize package, including the new signature edition of or no, 25th anniversary anniversary. edition of Beauty and the Beast on Blu-ray and DVD. Boom. A Funko Pop of Lumiere. Boom. And a Tsum Tsum of Cogsworth. Cogsworth. And a special additional surprise, maybe a little piece of artwork. You never know. And all of this will come to one lucky winner. Oh, wait, one more thing, yeah. An ASP button. An Animation Station Podcast button. So it's a huge prize package. Uh, it's open to our listeners around the world, and we thank all of you listeners in other countries. We've gained several. How, where were we in nine countries now? We're in nine countries yes. now, which is pretty we're cool. We're taking over the world. There's, there's two countries that I'm like really like, wow, yeah, that's really cool. It's really cool how the internet allows you know uh, something like this to just go out all over the world. It's yeah. really neat. If we could get somebody in some Arctic outpost in Antarctica, I think that would be a win. That would be a super That would win. be super that's, cool. That's our podcast goal, to have a listener in Antarctica. Some scientist who also likes cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get a Disney scientist? <laughs> that's amazing. All right, Josh. It's time to move into the whole point of this episode. We got the unbelievably cool chance to interview a professional working in the animation industry today tell us about her we got the insanely talented voice actress morgan berry yes uh she does anime voice acting she does video game voice acting 
She has her own YouTube channel where she does a lot of anime covers. She does she covers sings, for other songs. She yeah. has her own songs on there. She did Frozen's She did uh, Let, Frozen's it Let It Go. Yeah, yes. Which was nice. Uh, yeah, and she has like all kinds of cool stuff out there. Oh, yeah. Um, she's recently, she's been in uh, Show by Rock, uh, Divine Gate, Tokyo ESP, uh, The Boy and the Beast, which mm, we will be covering on our list very soon, in right? December. It's like three like weeks our away. Our last we're do week that? of December is oh, okay. The Boy and the Beast. It's on our list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tokyo Ghoul, Hyper Dimension, Neptuna, um, and she's the main character in Real Story of the Devil. Nice. Story. Riddle story of devil. Yeah, it's hard to say. It's I, weird. I, mess, mess yeah, I, I, I want that extra the or uh in there. <laughs> but no, yeah. she's she's great. Um, we've if act- you guys have Funimation, you can jump yeah, right into her stuff. Check all of her stuff yeah, out. She's got a ton of stuff. Um, you know, she's done a lot of work with Funimation, so a lot of her stuff is available. And like we said on her YouTube channel, she's an unknown songbird. An unknown songbird. Right? You can jump right into that. Listen to her beautiful voice. Um, yeah, we consider ourselves very lucky and fortunate to have had the chance to interview her. And stay tuned to the end of the podcast. We're actually going to have one of her covers from Tokyo Ghoul as our outro this week. All right, let's get into it. I'm All excited. right. Yeah, and I promise to protect her no matter what, even if it means that I have to die. If that's what it takes, then so be it. What's up, yo? I'm the drummer, Jacqueline. Girl, I dream about snack time all night long. No, please turn that off. Just stop it. You're gonna make me dry up like a wrinkly old lady. I did it. I finally brought down a lion during today's hunt. That means I'm a sheer gear now, too. Someday you shall become the greatest hero in all of Pars. I'll try anyway. Ritska. Oh, come on, don't cry, sis. If you want me to, I can talk to mom for you, okay? It'll be fine. Because I'll take good care of you. All right, guys, we have a special segment that we're going to do right now. We have a very special guest, Miss Morgan Berry. Hi. Hi, Morgan. <laughs> Hello. Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, we're so yeah. glad to have you. Thank, thanks for coming on. We're really excited about this. <laughs> All right, Morgan, do you mind telling our audience what exactly you do for a living? Well, hello, audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I do for a living, I do a lot of voice acting in anime and video games and sometimes web series. Um, I do a lot of stuff on YouTube. I have my own channel where I sing covers of, of songs from anime shows and sometimes video games. And yeah, I'm still working on that as well. But um, I... Oh, it's a lot of fun. I love the performing arts. Always have, always will. So your YouTube channel is the Unknown Songbird. Yes. Did that like? How exactly did you get into the voice acting? Did the YouTube channel help you with that, or how did everything kind of like? Did an opportunity just present itself? Oh uh, well, how I got started in voice acting, uh, man, that was man. It just happened. It was crazy. I um. Okay, so here's the story. I, I, I've been acting since I was, I don't know, like since I was maybe 12. Wow. And so I already had acting experience and I had vocal experience when it came to singing. Uh, I mean, since I was 14. And so I already had all of this, um, you know, I already had a love for the performing arts. And then and I was also a huge fan of anime, coincidentally, <laughs> right? I grew up with anime. And so it's funny. Um, in 2013, like around November, I saw that Todd Habercorn was having a convention. He was calling it Habercon. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Todd> Habercorn. <laughs> yes. It was beautiful. Um, yeah. So I saw that he was having a convention and I thought, whoa, cool. I want to meet Todd. Like I'm a huge fan of his. Right. And then I kept reading this article and he said that he was holding a voice acting competition. Really? And I was like, yeah, and I was like, huh, well, I've been acting for quite a few years now, and I love it. So, I mean, and then, you know, I, it never really occurred to me that voice acting was a thing. It is, as weird as that may sound, even though I was a huge fan of many voice actors for, you know, years, and it suddenly occurred to me, wait, this is a thing that I might be able to do, you know? Nice. Like, I love acting, and 
I could do this. So I take it you won the voice acting competition. Yes. <laughs> and the prize for this contest was an audition at Funimation. And so I, after I won this contest, I got to audition at Funimation and they liked me enough to keep me. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much the dream for anime nerds. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> you get that Funimation gig, <laughs> you're set. <laughs> Well, I would hope so. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've, a lot of uh, great opportunities have come my way since then, and so I'm really mm -hmm. grateful for it. I know that it's um, it's not easy, even even after achieving that. It's still a really hard business to be in, you know, show business. Yeah. But I am fortunate enough to have gotten a lot of cool opportunities from it. That's awesome. So when when you go into like can't even talk. So when you go into, uh, like, say, the studio, and they give you your role, well, I, I mean, you have to audition for your role. So when you are, you're auditioning for your role, do you do any sort of background or anything? Do you watch the anime beforehand? Maybe it's subbed and see, see if you can get a feel for the character? Or how, how exactly does your process go? If they tell me what show I'm auditioning for, yes, I will watch it. Most likely watch the full first season to get a feel for it and see what I'm, you know, getting into to see if it's even appropriate. If it's not, I'll probably, I probably won't audition for it. But I mean, I, uh, for the most part, part, for the most part, I will audition for it. But, um, yeah, I try to get a feel for each and every character and, uh, see which one fits my vocal range for the most part. But sometimes we're not even told what show we're auditioning for. And sometimes we're just winging it. <laughs> but um so what I mean, does that yeah. what does that look like when they if they don't tell you you know what exactly the show is that you're auditioning for you know in, in a in a live action scenario you know sometimes they're they're considering your look and you know whether or not you look the part but in this case it's only sounding the part so what kind of prompts do they would they give you to kind of pull that out of you so that they could tell well i mean we go in and then there's a booklet on the front desk mm -hmm. And that has all the audition sides. It doesn't have. It doesn't list every single character in the show, though. They only list a few, and then you choose three to read for for the audition. And so you, you know, I usually get there a little early so I can read through all of them and uh, read the biography. They give you the the character information. They'll have a picture of the character, a biography. You know, they'll give you the the backstory, and they'll the director will also have notes as to how they want this character to sound. Okay. And yeah, I just I take those notes and I just run with it. Wow, that's that's actually pretty fascinating. I I, I have no idea how you know how that process works. So just just knowing that, uh, I find that hugely impressive that you can go on such little information and and then end up landing a gig and building on it from there. That's, that's really impressive to me. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Cause I was just looking, I was like, how, how do you go into like something like show by rock and then go into riddle <laughs> story of the devil Two completely <laughs> polar opposites. <laughs> the funny thing about that is I act, I auditioned for Tokaku and riddle story of devil. I didn't audition for Jacqueline. Really? Um, it, while I, after I was done with one of my recording sessions for Riddle, Riddle Story of Devil, um, Caitlin, the director, was like, cool, we're done with that for today, and now I want you to watch this clip. And she showed me a clip from Show by Rock. And it, you know, it showed my character. And I was like, cool, this looks awesome. Why are you showing me this? And she goes, you're going to voice for this character. And I was like, oh, cool. So I didn't audition for that character. And nice. I didn't really know much about that show going into it at all. Uh, it just kind of happened, but um, you know that that's happening more often with these broadcast dubs. Um, the directors, for the most part, know our vocal types, and mm -hmm. so sometimes they'll just cast us, and we won't even know that we're cast in the show. We'll just come in to record for the director, and we're like, "Cool, what are we working with today?" And they're like, "Well, we're recording for a new show," and we're like, "Oh, cool. Well, let's get started." Okay, do the directors, whenever you go in, do they give you in a lot of creativity? I know you said that they give you some show notes and everything like that to do, but do they kind of like let you do your own thing or are they kind of, you know, dictators? Like, I want you to read it just like this. How, how, how does that usually work? For the most part, we're delivering the vision that the director wants. 
I haven't really experienced, um, I really haven't had a moment where I can uh, come up with my own voice with something new. I mean, hopefully one of these days I'll be able to have a role that I can just, you know, kind of make my own. But yeah, when it comes to anime, it's a, it's a, it's different. You gotta, the director knows what they want and you just gotta run with their vision. Yeah. Do you uh, relate to any of the characters that you voice? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. Uh, Love, Live, Sunshine. Johanne. Oh gosh, I cried during episode <laughs> five. Ah. Uh, I was recording for it, and I was just like, oh, I feel you. Oh, the feels. Like, seriously, though, with with Johanne, you know, Yoshko, mm -hmm. oh, gosh, she's a Chinibio, you know? She's ridiculous. She is crazy. She has such an active imagination, and I, I just find it so beautiful. And in episode five, it's the episode where she joins the band, and and she discovers that it's okay to be herself. You know, mm -hmm. this persona that she's created is a part of her. And, you know, at one point it's trying to be, you know, it's being taken away from her. She's like, you know what, you know, this is how it's supposed to be. I'm just Yoshiko. I'm not Yo Yohane. But it's like, girl, be who you want to be. Be, you know, be your, it's your, the favorite part of yourself. Be who you want to be. You know, that's, man, the message in that particular episode struck me hardcore. Yeah, man. absolutely. Y'all need to watch that episode. I mean, and I'm not just saying that because I'm, I'm not just saying that because, because I'm her voice. Mm -hmm. I really just love that episode and I love the message within it. You know, just be yourself. That's the main message and it's so beautiful. And I, Man, her character, it speaks so much to me. and Yeah. So what do you do? That, that's a great answer, by the way. I loved your enthusiasm on that answer. But what do you do when you run into a character that you really don't relate to at all? Like, what do you tap into to kind of continue to deliver if it's something that you can't relate to? Hmm. Well, acting. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the where the skill. acting chops come in. Nice. Yeah. There's, um, <laughs> oh gosh, there's this one, uh, you know, this one character, he's a dying orphan. Like, I'm not an orphan and I'm not dying. How mm -hmm. am I going to, how am I going to voice for this dude? <laughs> and there's, you know, there's <laughs> another character who witnessed the death of his parents right in front of his eyes. And I'm just like, I haven't, my parents are still alive. Like, <laughs> right. I don't, I cannot relate to this character at all. But I, so I have to put myself in their shoes mm -hmm. and do a bit of method acting sometimes. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to kill my parents. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go Bruce Wayne on. I'm going to get rid of them. <laughs> Hire a hitman just so I can feel the character's pain. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, I have to, sometimes I do have to think of moments that have struck a certain chord in me and, mm -hmm. I have to use that in order to pull from those emotions to portray this character in this certain scene. Um, yeah, uh, in Riddle Story of Devil, there was a you know there was a scene where Tokaku is you know crying. Yeah, and it's very unusual for her character to do so. And man, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just got it. You got to revisit moments mm -hmm. sometimes revisit moments from your past that you know you most of the time you don't want to revisit but you can use that to feel the character's emotions and to really relate to them and honestly I find it to be such a beautiful thing to put yourself in their shoes no matter what mm -hmm. emotion it is it's like um you know it's like they become a part of you almost you know right uh, going off of that, do you have a favorite character that you've voiced so far? I do. Uh, Tokaku Azuma from Riddle Story yeah. of Death. <laughs> yes, <Nice>. I love her. <laughs> I've always wanted to voice for a stoic and heroic female badass. And she is <laughs> totally a female badass. <laughs> Man, she is exactly, she's the role that I've always wanted to play, you know, because you know, in my own fantasies, I feel like I'm a badass. <laughs> I feel like everyone wants to be that hardcore, her 
that hardcore hero. Mm -hmm. And Tokaku was that for me. And she, and I loved being able to study her character. And she's so stoic and heroic. And I love it. Awesome. Uh, is it different? Like, do you have any sort of uh, particular way that you go into these? Because I know you've voiced some uh, male characters before. Is it different trying to get into that male perspective as opposed to getting to a female perspective? Or do you just go in and it doesn't matter to you? In all honesty, boy voices come really easily to me. I, I love voicing for boys because I feel like it's easier <laughs> than voicing for girls. Is that weird? <laughs> no, no. I really do, I really do um, find it very comfortable in my range. I love mm -hmm. voicing for boys. Like, my dream role would be Ash Ketchum. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? A, a, a male protagonist, you know? But I really do uh, find it very comfortable in my range. Yeah, I find that interesting because there are other examples, you know, famous examples of uh, voice actors that are females that do for boys. And I always forget her name. What's the name of the lady that does Bart Simpson? Oh, God. What is her name? Put I can't me remember. on the spot, man. I, I know. I, I always go blank. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, I've, I know of several, and I, I think that's fascinating. Um, Nancy Cartwright. That's yeah. it. Nancy I Cartwright. just I was just pulling everything up. I was like, gotta get my phone out. For some reason, I always think Nancy Reagan, and I'm like, no, that's not it was right. Not Nancy Reagan. <laughs> it's not right. I love to hear Nancy Reagan say, "Eat my shorts." That would be pretty good. I'd <laughs> be hilarious. All right. Um, do you have any funny recording stories or bloopers that have happened during your uh, recording sessions? Well, <laughs> I was recording for Overlord, and I I did um I made a joke in the booth, and it was about Trump, so I probably can't say it now. <laughs> but uh, we call those jokes bombs. Mm -hmm. So basically, if I go in the booth and I want to leave a bomb for the next actor that records, here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, <laughs> I'm going instead of saying my line, I'm going to say something absolutely ridiculous i'm gonna say a joke i'm gonna i'm gonna say something that's not the line and it's gonna be hilarious and most of the time we try to match the flaps mm -hmm. for those jokes even if it's not written in the script we try and match the flaps to make it look natural right and then the next person that steps in instead of hearing the line before their line you know they're about to come in and record after the three beeps but instead of hearing the line they're supposed to hear they hear a joke Oh, and that's it awesome. Them up. It trips them up, they <laughs> laugh, and then it takes them a while to recover. <laughs> it's great. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'll leave a few bombs for the next actor that comes in. Nice. So, yeah, jokes. It's fun to leave jokes. One time, Christopher Sabat left one. And so, when I went in the booth next, oh gosh, it was great. It was for Chaos Dragon. <laughs> um, he plays a character that has a, mus a mustache coming out of his nose. It looks like it's. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And so I went in and I was about to say my line and then you hear, you know, Christopher Sabat come in and say, Yes, this is indeed a mustache coming out of my nostrils. <laughs> and it was just perfect. And it just, you know, gets you laughing and then it takes you a while to recover and then you continue working. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's awesome. That's so good. I, I never would have thought of that. That's the perfect, like, prank battle to have. I and mean, it can just go back right? and forth and back and forth. That's awesome. Yes. Yes, um, there was also one in an Overlord. Uh, is this? Uh, am I allowed to cuss on this? Uh, you can PG yeah. thirteen. Yeah, Maybe PG not every F, it. you know, but I mean it's okay. But yeah, say it, and if we want to put a bleep over it, we can put a bleep over it. Says so the guy. Like who, to... Says the guy who doesn't have to edit. We can put a bleep. Yeah, over it. Yeah, I'll make Josh put a bleep over it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll say thing. the word and I'll just let you guys bleep it. Okay, All right, cool. <laughs> cool. And so we're, um, I was about to record for a certain scene, and then, uh, <laughs> and then Guerrero, his character, um, instead of saying his line, he just yells at my character. Man, you know what? It may not have even been my character. It was someone else's character. Maybe it was Lucy's character. Or Laura's character. It was Laura's character. And he just, instead of saying his line, he goes, What do you know? <laughs> And it was so great. Just That's awesome. Moments like that. It's just, it's ridiculous. And it's, it's so much fun to hear. Just, you know, because when we're in the booth, 
for the most part, it's just us in that booth. Mm -hmm. Um, Unless it's a Walla session where there's multiple actors recording background lines. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, when you have a role, a named role, it's just you in that booth. And of course, the director and audio engineer. And so we, you know, we don't get a lot of chances to to record with other actors unless it's Walla sessions. And so it's nice to nice to be able to joke around even if though even though that person's not really there (laughs) yeah sure um have you ever heard of the anime ghost stories yes Uh, yeah when you were saying that i automatically went to ghost stories because i'm like that would be the best thing to ever work on just the amount of crap that those guys put each other through get in there early so they can record their lines just to screw up the next person fantastic (laughs) Yes, it's basically an abridged series, but it's better than the original. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I tried watching the original. I got like two episodes. I'm like, no, the dub's better. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, the original made absolutely no sense. And so the people that you know owned it, they're like, do whatever you want with it. This makes no sense anyway. Yeah. So they did. <laughs> <laughs> they kept making references like to the rings. Like, is this the grudge episode or the ring episode? I think we did the ring last <laughs> week. <laughs> You know so what? Good. I used to get those two movies mixed up. Uh, <laughs> They're I, both I, equally scary. I don't remember which one has Sarah Michelle Geller, so it's whichever <laughs> one doesn't have her in it. <laughs> Do you have any uh, future projects uh, right now that you're allowed to talk about? Yes! Okay. I am voicing for Murga, the main villain of Freedom Planet 2, and that is going to be available on Nintendo platforms in 2017 so i'm really excited about that and you're gonna be on the switch i i might be actually i might be that would be pretty pretty cool (laughs) and um i'm also voicing for um the smite world championship amaterasu skin in the high-res game smite so i'm really excited about that as well very cool yeah, I think so far, I think that's all I can really talk about. There's a few other things I'm working on that I'm looking forward to, but I cannot quite speak of them yet. <laughs> is, that, is that hard to be working on something that you're really excited about that you can't talk about? Ooh. <laughs> well, man, I just get so giddy, and mm-hmm. I want to talk about it, but I won't because I don't want to lose that role. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I don't know how. I couldn't do that. <laughs> I'm terrible at keeping (laughs) secrets, so I couldn't do it. (laughs) All righty. You guys ready to go into the top five? Yeah, let's do it. All righty. Let's go into the top five. And now for another top five. All right, guys. We're going to do the top five. This week, we decided to do top five animated duos. Yeah, this one's exciting. I, I came up with a bunch for this one. Oh, uh, jeez. Of course you did. <laughs> the one episode I don't come up with a lot, you decide to come up with no. 9,000. Okay, we're going to start this off with Morgan. So, Morgan, who's your number five? Oh, my number five. Uh, guys, I love Full Metal Alchemist. So, if I were to choose a, a top duo, it would be Edward and Alphonse Elric. Nice. I love those brothers. I love them so much. Gosh, their bond is so strong. It's beautiful. <laughs> and they will stop at nothing to help each other out. You know, that's that's a beautiful thing because me and my sisters don't really get along. So <laughs> it's, yeah. So it's nice to see two siblings get along so well and to fight so hard for each other. And it's a beautiful thing and I envy it. <laughs> yeah. And like stuff happens in that series where they kind of get separated but they always find their way back, and like the brotherly love between the two, mm-hmm. like you, it's you can't top it. Nice, right? Just can't top it. <laughs> nice, good pick. Starting off strong here. All right, so my number five is the original Disney duo, Chip and Dale. Chip, oh, and, Chip nice. and Dale are just classic comedy duo. Um, you know their antics, <laughs> um, frustrating Donald Duck. Um, it's just, it's timeless. I was love... Was that first one the one where they're in that farm? And they're... Gosh, I don't know what the first one is, you know, because those things, As you know, Disney didn't expert, you ever know. come out during our lifetime, you know, so we only watched them on videos or, you know, if they had a run of them on Saturday morning or something, but I have no idea which one started it, but anytime Chip and Dale are on, I'm watching. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That was a good pick. Oh, thanks. 
I also went Disney Ooh, for my number five. I'm surprised. I didn't go movie. Okay. I went with a Disney show. Okay. I went with Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable from Kim Possible. Nice. The look, there's a Ooh, fly like on my that. TV. Sorry, it bugged me. Um, oh, yeah, like, not bug. Oh no, that's a good one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, like they're they're bond. Like they start off as best friends, neighbors. They've been together forever. That slowly throughout the course of the series, finally in the final season, results in a romance. And I'm a stickler for the romance. Yeah, you are. So <laughs> this was is a per- they're a great couple. They're great friends. They've been through basically everything, saving the world. I think twice in the movies. Nice. So yeah, they're they're just perfect. Awesome, good pick. All right, Morgan, what's your number four? Oh gosh, number four, a duo. So it's just got to be two, right? Yeah. You can you can throw some you can throw like four in there. I've done that before. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Totally lenient. <laughs> okay, so. I chose all of the Thundercats as number one cat ones, so it's all right. Nice. Oh, sweet. Well, I would definitely have to say a gosh, I love Attack on Titan. So Aaron <laughs> Yeager and of course Armin and Mikasa. Just the I trio. Love them. Yes, the trio. You gotta have all three of them. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I don't know if you guys saw the live action movie though. Oh my gosh, yeah. that was see. They tricked me. They tricked yeah. me with that so hard. Mm. When they first came out with like when they first started showing the previews, like okay, cool. So they sold uh, part one and part two mm-hmm. together. So I'm like, okay, sweet. I'll buy part one and I'll buy part two because it's Attack on Titan. It can't be bad. It was bad. It, I was just, like after the first, I was like, "Well, I've already paid for the second tickets. Like, I guess I have to go." I mean, it was yep. like it was like twelve dollars. I can't not go. I've already spent the oh, money. Man. So it was yeah. like a two night thing. Hmm? It was like on different nights. They yeah, sold it was part like one and then part two. Two weeks later, so oh, you had man. to. Unfortunately, be like, yeah, I got to go back. I can't. I Sorry can't about not that. Go back. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, not going to lie. It was pretty awful. Um, so, you know, in that movie, Mikasa, she's uh, she's kind of gone for yeah. a long, a long while. And so the trio, you know, they're kind of they, the trio broke up because, you know, they think she's dead. And it's like, what is this? This is not the attack on Titan. I know it was. <laughs> It was it was awful. Yeah, so we've bad. had a lot of discussions on this show about uh, movies that they're making live action that are coming from animated movies, and you know it seems like more often than not they're not as good as the animated movie. It just it just doesn't work always, and we're not totally sure why always. But we also wish that they would go the other direction and. There are a lot of live action movies that we think would would have been better if they did animated. And we'd love to see them start doing it in the other direction. But they never seem to go that way. They always seem to take animation and make it live action and screw it up. Ghost mm-hmm. in the Shell starting to look pretty good, though. Is it? Yeah, they just released some stuff, I think it was either today or yesterday, showing, I think, because I think there was a uh, some sort of event uh, out in L- L.A. probably. Mm-hmm. That they showed a whole bunch of the, you know, like the cybernetics, and there was like a new preview of her, uh, well, Scarlett Johansson being basically turned into the cyborg. Oh, it right. looked really, really good. It, it nice. kind of had that Westworld feel because she like goes up into like this white ooze stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, nifty. I like what they're doing there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one that if it does good. They might green light a live action Cowboy Bebop movie, right? They're never going to live. Act. You don't yeah, think they will? It's, it's never going to happen. It's too hard they, to cast. You can't cast that. <laughs> First off, you have to find a good corgi. You can't find oh a good corgi gosh. that can act. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whose turn is it? Is That's it my turn? your turn. Oh, okay, cool. My number four is from my favorite Pixar movie, Cars, Lightning McQueen and Mater. I just love their friendship. It's just such a pure, simple best friend scenario and you know it kind of takes a while for them to it really take lightning a while in that first movie to kind of realize oh my gosh this guy is like the best most loyal friend I will ever have and when he kind of just settles into it and realizes okay I'm a race car he's a redneck tow truck but we can be totally best friends even though we come from totally different worlds and 
I just appreciate that. I like that message, and I think they're hilarious, and I love cars. Morgan, you don't know this about Gavin, but he's absolutely obsessed with cars. Mm, yeah. Like, Sweet. it's <laughs> it's so much that like, he has a Cars Land hat. Yeah, I am that wearing a wearing. Cars Land hat tonight. It's, oh, man. <laughs> he has nice. shirts. If he, if he had a tattoo... It would be it would of be Lightning cars. McQueen. It would probably be cars, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm just so into it. Have you been to Disneyland, Morgan, and seen Cars Land? You know what? I went to Disneyland when I was a kid, so okay. nope. Yeah. Well, if you ever get the experience of going back, Cars Land will blow your mind. I guarantee it. Nice. Well, hopefully <laughs> I'll be able to go in the future then. Yeah, you should. All right. For my number four, I went to a little Nickelodeon show called Rugrats. I went with Tommy Pickles and Chucky Finster, the two best friends and probably the best friends that Nickelodeon has ever had. Wow. Other than the Pete's from Pete and Pete. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. Man, I'm going full on anime now. Oh, don't you worry. Guys are don't, coming well, up my, with anime's, stuff. my anime's coming up. I wanted to get the other ones out of the way. My anime's coming. Yeah, Josh <laughs> always ends on anime, so you're in good company. Me? No. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right. Um,. Morgan, back to you, number three. Okay, Gumball and Darwin. <laughs> <laughs> nice. From the amazing world of Gumball. I love that show, and those two are adorable and hilarious, and I just, wow, that show, it's it's great. So, yes, everything about it. I like perfect. that pick. I like yeah, it. That's a, that's Thank a good you. one. Yeah, I love the colors in that show. <laughs> Me too. Once good. you said that, I totally forgot. I did not put Finn and Jake on this list. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of regretting that I didn't put that Jake on the list. Me. Dang it. <laughs> All right. Um, my pick, number three. Right? Is it my? Did we do yours? Yeah, it's yours. Yeah, it's your number three. I think we skipped you. Okay. My number three is from Wallace and Gromit. It's none other than the title characters of Wallace and Gromit. Morgan, you also don't know this about Gavin. He's oh also God. obsessed with Wallace and Gromit. They were fantastic. <laughs> you're gonna rewatch Wallace and Gromit with me one of these days, hey, and I've you're seen gonna Rabbit. fall in love with them all over again. I promise. Sure, they're just great. They're delightful. They're quaint. They're cozy. They're British. The dog is hilarious. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I stick by it. For my number three, <laughs> I did go into the world of anime. I went with so I got what? What is her name? Oh, wait, yeah, okay. Soul Eater Evans and Maka Alberin. Alberin? Soul and Maka from Soul Eater. Yeah, that's a good pick. Yeah, just there. You don't know Soul Eater. Man, I don't know. All that the, one, sorry. I, see, I, I try to teach him <laughs> anime and it just goes over I'm his head. I'm learning slowly. It's slowly spreading, though. Yes, it is. Um, but yeah, like the bond that those two share, like whenever they resonance, it's, it's great. They. No, I'm not. I'm not even gonna explain it to you, Gavin. Well, no. Tell me. Just give me the synopsis. Like, I don't okay. know anything about that show. She's so tell me basically a. Bit. a uh, she's a meister, so she uh, kind of like collects souls and everything. Okay. And soul is her weapon. He's a boy, but he turns it into a scythe. Oh, okay. And if he collects 99 human souls and one witch soul, he can become like this ultimate scythe. Ooh. And basically, death will have his scythe. Gotcha. And death the kid voiced by Todd Habercorn, so we're bringing it all back again. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a good pick. I like that. All right, Morgan, back to you. Okay, so I have an obsession. Okay. And it's based off an old 80s cartoon, and they revamped it quite recently. It's Ooh. called Voltron Legendary <laughs> Defender. Nice. And nice. I love it so much. I love it, guys. I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's my new obsession. I can't even stress that enough. Man, I'm so glad they revamped that series. Um, but yeah, that whole team, they're, they're my favorite team ever. So I can't just pick two. But if I did, no, I can't pick two. <laughs> it's got to be the whole team. I love them to death. Team I love Voltron. Them. Nice. Uh, okay. yes. Yeah, that's, that's a good pick. That's, um, yeah, that was on, is that a Netflix exclusive? Yes, yeah, yes I it think is. so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You need to watch it. Yeah, I I'm, seen I'm any waiting of the new for a second stuff. season. I watched the first one. Like, yes! uh, okay, the second season comes out January 20th, and I'm stoked. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That's right around the corner. <laughs> that is awesome. 
Yeah, I like what Netflix is doing with their anime stuff. They're actually going out and getting different stuff. Like, they did uh, Knights of Sidonia, mm-hmm. and then they've got, uh, is it Ajin? Yeah, Jin. I'm not sure how to yeah. pronounce that either, actually. Yeah, I haven't watched that one yet, but, I mean, I love Me Knights of Sidonia. That's mainly because Johnny Young Bosch is in it, and I'm in love with him. So, <laughs> he's he's in the show, so I'm like, oh, well, Johnny Young Bosch is in something. I have to watch it. Nice. And it's actually quite nice. good. Sweet. All right. Well, my next pick, I'm going back to the world of Disney because that's my home base. I'm going to a little movie known as The Lion King and Timon and Pumbaa. They, to me, are the ultimate comedic duo in Disney. And I love that movie. And I know you do too, Josh. But Yeah, I love the movie. But, I mean, Simba and Nala are way better than Timon and Pumbaa. Yeah, but they're not a duo. I, I mean, know. they are at the very last minute of the movie i guess but timon and pumbaa are like the ultimate duo they're just living out there on the serengeti nobody's helping them they're on their own they just help each other hakuna matata doing their thing they help out this little lion cub that comes along he becomes a pal then it kind of breaks up the duo a little bit it's a trio but yeah timon and pumbaa man going back to voltron i did like what they did with pitch (sighs) Sorry, I liked your pick. No, you didn't. I, I liked your pick. It was no, good. Keep going. But I've—I mean, the whole bit with uh, that they did with pitch, like turn, like kind of saw it coming. I mean, they didn't really veil it, like hide it too much. But when they're like, "Oh yes, she's actually a girl," it's like, "What?" Yeah, it was. It was. It was a nice little twist that they had on there. Oh. Spoiler alert! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. For the spoilers. audience. Spoilers. And spoilers <laughs> for Gavin. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> so that was number two? Yeah, we're on Okay. Two. So my number two, I went with Dipper and Mabel Pines from Disney's Gravity Falls. You nice. stole my next idea! <laughs> hey, feel free to use it. Yeah. There's We have cr- like multiple crosses all the time. But yeah, those two together... Fantastic. I got Gavin into watching the show. Yep. I'm and... about two thirds of the way through season two and ah, it's so good. Yeah. Such a good show. It's a, it's a, sh- it's a shame. There's it's, no, more. I know it's, it's really a shame. There needs to be like 10 seasons of it. <laughs> All right, Morgan, Last what do pick. you have for your number one? I guess the original Pokemon trio. Ash, nice. Brock, and Misty. Nice. Oh, they're the original. They all, they were so close to making my list. Like, I had to mark Ash, Ash off just because I was like, oh no. I was afraid it was too anime, my list. I was like, mm, probably shouldn't put Ash on there. That's why he did not make the cut. Oh, well then, when I have to go back to my childhood, because, you know, Pokemon was, man, that was my jam. But also Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, you know what? Joey and, oh, and Joey Yugi. Wheeler. Oh, they're another. Oh man! Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they're another good duo. I love them. <laughs> Joey, he's so weird. Like, how does he win anything? He doesn't know. know how to play the game half the time. He's like, you know I'm gonna choose my kunai with chain and baby dragon. That's all he did. That was his whole entire repertoire. It's like, um, baby dragon. Oh, I can't play him yet. Well, too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and play him because I'm Joey Wheeler. Wow. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Gavin pick. doesn't know Good the pick, choice though. of Yu-Gi-Oh. Good pick. Yeah, I, I, I know that they're iconic, but I... Yeah, I you're, you're like Seto Kaiba. What does that mean? I'm you're, old? Nah, don't worry about it. He wears a trench coat. He's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. What do you got, Gav? All right, so my final pick is from the DreamWorks movie Road to El Dorado. Miguel, oh, that's a good one. Miguel and Tulio. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> adventurers, that's really good. adventurers in South America. I think they're they're a great duo. They bring a lot of comedy. They bring a lot of adventure. They have their little fight in the middle of the movie, and then they come together in the end, of course. And I just think they're the dynamic duo of domestic animation. That's good. I, I didn't like do it. any anime this time at all. I know you're shocked. Yeah, it's shock that you didn't do any anime. <laughs> okay, for my number one, contrary to what I said last week, and my favorite show growing up was oh Pokemon. For my number one, I went with the show that was on the other channel. 
I went with Digimon, and I went with Tai and Agumon. Yes! The best of friends. Grew up with Joshua Seth. The show's fantastic. The two of them together, all of the Digi Dustin really could have made my list, but I went Tai and Agumon. Just because they're so perfect for each other. Yep, it's true. I love nice. It. So, Digimon. That's that's a good mic drop right there. Yep, you're just going to drop like it on it. Digimon. I like it. Very good. Nice. I approve. Well, Morgan, thank you so much for coming on with us. This was really, really fun. Yeah, thank you. thanks a lot. We really enjoyed this, and we hope you enjoyed it, too. Well, well thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun talking with you guys. <laughs> awesome. Now, Morgan, where can all of our wonderful listeners find you on, social media-wise? They can find me on Twitter at the Morgan Barry, and they can also find me on Instagram at the Morgan Barry, and on Facebook at official Morgan Barry, <laughs> and on YouTube as an unknown songbird. Nice, <laughs> excellent. What about you, Gavin? Well, you can find me at Gavin Odison Art on Instagram and Twitter, and you. You can find. Me on Instagram and Twitter at Josh L. Kane. Nice. And where can they find the podcast? Find the podcast on Instagram at Animation Station Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Animate Podcast. You can find us on YouTube. On I almost said at again. You can find us on uh, Facebook. Not YouTube. We're not on there yet. They'll We're, own we'll it get at there. some point. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, you can find us on Facebook uh, if you look up Animation Station Podcast. We do have a Tumblr now. I don't know how to use Seriously? it. Seriously? But I created when did one. We get a Tumblr. You know. Wow. It's also at Animation Station Podcast. Of course. Of uh, course. you can go to the website www.animationstationpodcast.com. Jeez, we're everywhere. Yes. I dude, I try. <laughs> uh, you find all of our episodes on iTunes and Twitter. No, you can't. iTunes and Stitcher. See, I'm it's late. I'm it's not even late. I can't even use that excuse. <laughs> you can find all of our episodes on iTunes and Stitcher and you can also find our episodes through the website, mm-hmm. the animationstationpodcast.com. Find us through there. You can listen to us through your browser. All right. Sounds good. That uh, that wraps it up for episode, what is it, 17? Episode 17. Episode 17. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Nice. The stairs inside of me. The monster pulling strings. I'm broken Helpless dying Surrounded by the world You stare and laugh with me When you don't see a thing I'm damaged now And I'm breaking down Unshakable, unshakable, was shaken up when I found you. I'm standing here watching the world as it falls around me. You're so close, but I hope that you stop searching. I don't want you to foresee what I become. So please stop looking. I don't wanna hurt you, it's not my nature. A monster born, I'm fading more, can't be your savior. I'm Stay
bother me of strangers need I can't be free The darkness and the light, the light Our fate ahead won't be denied So breakable, unbreakable, so shakable, unshakable These dirty ants know they won't touch you I'm standing here watching the world as it falls around me You're so close but I hope that you stop searching I don't want you to foresee what I became So please stop looking, I'm trapped in the Pulled 